All right, so these will be all the items you need to get the job done right here. Uh, starting off, you need a 7 16 wrench for all of your charge air boot clamps. Uh, you'll need a eight millimeter wrench, um, a 10 millimeter wrench, uh, a couple various extensions, an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket, a ratchet, a set of pliers, flathead, a file to uh, clean the line up after you cut it to install your flare fitting, uh, your hacksaw to cut the line with, a four millimeter allen key, and a T20 Torx. A uh, good shop light will help. You'll need a little bit of assembly grease for the O-rings and some bright clean to clean everything out. But uh, other than that, these simple tools right here be everything you need to get it done. All right, this is going to be the CP4 disaster prevention kit install on a 11 to 16 power stroke. It won't be much different for the 17 to 20s, uh, except the line will be a little bit longer. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is remove our the lid to our air box and our intake manifold. We're gonna disconnect all these coolant lines and fold them back out of the way. And I'll show you how to get that done. Okay, so to get started, the first thing you're gonna wanna do for removing your air box lid is loosen this clamp here. Should be an eight millimeter. And you wanna come down here. And pop the clamps off the lid. Should be a little wire retainer clip here. Pull that back. Disconnect this sensor here, which will be uh, pull the red clip out, push in there. And once everything's disconnected, you will lift up on your lid. Make sure you get all the clamps. There's one here. Lift up on your lid. Kind of pry that out of there. And come over here and just wiggle it free. That's gonna be your first step there. All right, so now we got the air box out of the way, the air lid uh, and the intake piping. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is disconnect this vacuum line here and that harness back here on top of the intake manifold right here. We'll get that stuff disconnected and uh, moved out of our way. All right, so one of the next steps you're wanting to do is uh, in order to get that upper intake manifold off this black piece here, you're gonna to wanna to gain some access to this side where the bolts are back there. So I have an aftermarket uh, fuel filter head, but it'll be the same same process for the factory one. Just gonna disconnect these uh, two lines there and pull the pull the filter out of the way. And that'll give you better access back there. I'll show you that in a second. All right, so now we got that fuel filter out of the way there. You can look down here, you can see there's a bolt right there that holds the two dipsticks together and mounted. They're gonna be in the way of that bolt underneath the dipstick tube to help you get the intake manifold off, the upper intake manifold. There's four bolts on that side, four on this side over here, and these few on top here. We'll, uh, we'll get those disconnected and get the upper intake manifold off. All right, so once you get all those bolts out, you can see there's the four that hold the upper intake manifold on, the driver's side intake, and four that hold it over there on the passenger side. And then up top, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So all together, that's four and four, eight, seven, 15 total bolts holding the upper intake manifold on. So then you go ahead and pull this guy out of the way, set it off to the side. And then here, you know, wanna undo this connection for the charge pipe. And then you have some 10 millimeter bolts here. One, two, three, 10 millimeter bolts. And then the clamp for the turbocharger. All right, so now that we got the three bolts out of the lower intake manifold, you're gonna undo this clamp here. It should be a 7 16 And then you're gonna have a sensor down here on the bottom and one down here right there. You're gonna disconnect those and remove the lower intake manifold 
and it'll give you access to the fuel pump. Okay, so now you can see we got our lower intake manifold out of the way. Quick little tip for disconnecting this crankcase ventilation hose from the lower intake manifold is you want to rotate this plastic clip here counterclockwise and what that'll do is roll these little lock tabs out of the way and free it up you can pull it right off but now you can see we have access to the fuel pump and the the lines we're going to modify coming up here so we're going to go ahead and get everything brake cleaned real well because we're opening this fuel system we don't want to you know let any dirt or contamination into the fuel system we're gonna remove the t20 bolts that are holding the fuel delivery valve in and remove this bolt here and these two circ clips holding the fuel supply line and this larger line here is the one we're going to be after we've already disconnected our sensors disconnected the fuel line here and then release these two line re retaining brackets here all right, we're moving our fuel delivery valve here. We got the T20 bolts out. Remove that. Now this will be where you can typically usually find signs of a CP4 fuel pump failure. You'll be looking for pieces of metal in there. And here on your screen, if there's any large pieces of metal or rust, that'll usually be your first telltale sign of a CP4 fuel pump failure. Luckily, this one's looking okay right now. All right, so now you can see we got our fuel delivery valve out of here. This larger line here is our fuel supply line. This is the one we're gonna be modifying. So we've got these retaining clips undone, got our sensors unplugged. We can go ahead and grab the line and work it out of there. Leave it behind the C-clip. All right, so this is our disaster prevention kit for the CP4 fuel pump. Uh, I'll put a link in the description of where I got this one. It was on Amazon, I got it for about a $220 I believe uh, I'll put the part number in the, the link for it like I said in the description so what this is going to do is relocate our fuel delivery valve we'll put uh, this in here and uh, replace the o-rings that they supply us with mount this in here with the uh, factory bolts and uh, then this uh, this fitting in line will thread in here and uh, we'll be cutting this fuel supply line approximately here and uh, installing this fitting which will connect to the end of this hose and reroute our fuel for okay so per the instructions of the kit cut the fuel supply line one inch back from the closest sensor to the high pressure fuel pump so we took that we marked our line one inch back used our hacksaw put it in the vise and cut it and then uh, use your file to deburr the edges. A little sandpaper to get inside. Deburr in here. And then uh, use some brake clean and flush it out real well because you don't want any of those uh, pieces of metal to get stuck in there and end up in your fuel system. Okay, so the next step in the kit was to install your nut and your ferrule. Then uh, tighten your fitting from compression to AN adapter. Tighten that on there. Now we'll uh, we'll install the relocation block and install our line with our sensors and our flex line in between. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like as we're going. Alright, so at this point, we already got everything put back together in the reverse order that, that it came apart. It's pretty self-explanatory. You put your lower and upper intake manifolds back on. Put your fuel filter head back in place. Put your airbox lid back in place. Make sure all your connectors are back, plugged back in. And uh, then fire her up and check for leaks.
got a 